All right, so so yesterday I talked on this uh, first and second uh, topics. Now I'm uh, going to some very recent, some topical uh, uh, issues. The one is a uh, longer shanty, the other is kind of black holes. And uh, again, uh, if you have any questions, just uh, don't hesitate, just uh, maybe scream, shout, or whatever you <laughs> can do to stop me, okay? All right. Okay, so first, I, I non question curvature values. Non I, uh, by the way, so uh, the recently, uh, as uh, we discussed yesterday, that the uh, uh, perturbations uh, uh, from inflation uh, from the vacuum fluctuations, and uh, if uh, there are no interactions or anything, then the vacuum fluctuations, uh, uh, as uh, most of you know, that they are Gaussian uh, distribution. The real function is in the Gaussian form. So, <clears throat> so uh, any deviation from that Gaussian form, it, it uh, means some non-trivial dynamics during the inflation. So it is a very important, this non-Gaussian is a very important sort of a, 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 a quantity uh, which uh, we, we wish to uh, as, detect or maybe uh, give some uh, bounds on the, uh, the value. Now they ask uh, about the origins of non uh There are several uh, sort of uh, possibilities. Of course, uh, I'm not exhausting the, all the possibilities, but the possibilities which are most sort of uh, commonly sort of thought of. So one is self-interactions of inflaton or some uh, non-trivial vacuum, whatever, but uh, anyway, this is a quantum physics. So when it comes to quantum physics, of course, it, it is we, 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 uh, we originated from some causal dynamics. So it must be, or it must happen in on scales much smaller than the Hubble scale. So this is a supervising scale dynamics, quantum dynamics. Another is uh, the effect of multi-field case. In this case, I say uh, discuss uh, later that. Uh, uh, even if the uh, your, your scale is uh, uh, way outside the horizon, I mean, uh, there, if there, even if there are no sort of causal contact on uh, on, on the large scale, if uh, there are some non-trivial uh, uh, relation between, say, total energy density of the universe with say uh, uh, some uh, component of the uh, 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 energy density. Uh, uh, of the uh, of the each contribution to the uh, contribution from from each component, then uh, the, this component may have some large fluctuations. I mean, although the total energy may be almost uh, uniform, and this can give rise to a very large uh depending on the uh, sort of subsequence uh, dynamics of the inflation. Okay, so so that's uh, so essentially this is but the. Uh, the classical dynamics. So you can you can understand this non Gaussian effect from a classical, uh, let's say, uh, some scalar field dynamics. Another is the uh, nonlinearity in in gravity, which of course uh, uh, in the leading order uh, you may have some linear perturbation theory in the metric is valid, but uh, uh, naturally if uh, perturbation becomes large. Then you may have some nonlinear uh, gravitational effect, and those nonlinear gravitational effect might uh, uh, result in some uh, highly non-trivial uh, uh, non-gravity, and, and this has been discussed extensively in the last ten years. I'm not exactly sure <laughs> we have arrived at the uh, <coughs> uh, sort of a uh, uh, agreement. Uh, there are several uh, uh, different groups dif uh, saying different things. Um, so so I, I don't think I can touch this, but anyway, so the, these are the sort of main, three main sources of uh, the uh, uh, non gaussian Now, so so uh, which also can be classified in this kind of uh, figure. For example, uh, as I uh, introduced yesterday, this is the space-time or time-space diagram. The, uh, horizontal axis is the uh, number of e-fold and the uh, 
the right paraxis is log of the scale, and then any scale of interest will be a straight line, like this uh, red line, and, uh, and the, this uh, green line curve uh, represents, say, the uh, Hubble horizon scale, Hubble horizon size, horizon radius. And <coughs> before the, uh, this red uh, curve, uh, red straight line uh, crosses this uh, Hubble scale, uh, everything is inside the horizon, then you may could be because of some interaction, quantum interaction effect, uh, non trivial uh, effect from non trivial vacuum, you may have some type non Gaussian key embedded in, in the perturbation. Or when it comes in the scale that is outside the horizon, of course, there cannot be any a, 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 a causal sort of interaction. So, so it's essentially the, what we call the, the so each each part of the universe can be regarded as a uh, some uh, homogeneous and isotropic universe, and this is called a, a, a separate universe approach. But the, you can you can consider the dynamics on those uh, large scale scale greater than Hubble scale as as a dynamics of uh, a, a some. Uh, a, a, Especially homogeneous and isolated universe. Uh, I mean, you, you can you can uh, consider those dynamics by mapping uh, each region into a, a almost equivalent uh, homogeneous isolated universe. Anyway, so this is so uh, so you can you can understand the. Uh, uh, the uh... So I have a question here. Yes. Yeah, so I don't understand uh, the x-axis. So why do we have time extending on either side of the hot Big Bang? Sorry, I, I, what, 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 what do you mean the either side? So it seems like uh, the horizontal axis, uh -huh. we have uh, time in both directions to the right uh -huh. of Big Bang and to the left of Big Bang. Is that implying negative time or? Oh, oh uh, no, no, so, so this is number we call so, uh, I mean, in the classical sort of a, sort of a, a theory of uh, in, uh, let's say not inflation, it's just just the uh, uh, in 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 the case of the classical uh, solution, uh, the uh, the a equals zero, as you could see, goes to minus infinity. So in that sense, uh, uh, the the beginning of the universe is far far on the left. Okay. So it's just sent back, but which are completely unobservable because of, let's say, for example, this scale L, if you assume this is the current uh, uh, horizon scale, H0 inverse, then, then we cannot observe any any a sort of a scale which is greater than this scale, let's say this scale. Huh? So, so this scale is well beyond the horizon scale, which cannot be observed today, okay? So, so okay, thanks. I, yeah, on the right hand side, you, you know, you, you are bounded by the uh, the fact that we we are living today now. So 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 that's uh, and the uh, on the left, it's sort of a, a ideally just extend to in minus infinity, but uh, we don't really know what what happened before before what we can observe here. Is that okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, so so <clears throat> so this is uh, a, a, a so a, as I said, it, you may have some quantum effect inside the horizon and outside uh, the uh, Hubble horizon, you may have some classical multi-field sort of effects uh, which uh, generate non Gaussianity. And again, when it comes back inside the horizon, Hubble horizon, of course, start to interact gravitationally again. In this case. Uh, since the scale that we are interested in is large scale, like a few megas parsec, even maybe a hundred megas parsec, one giga parsec, was a large scale. So we don't expect any quantum physics to play a role. But instead, we have some nonlinear uh, gravitational interactions which might become important. So, but uh, so I don't uh, talk about this classical gravity effect. Okay. okay. Now, uh, about the uh, origins, uh, the, so as I said, the first is the, something which happens inside the horizon. Uh, 
during the, uh, the uh, inflationary stage. So one uh, a, the simplest uh, case is whether the self interaction uh, of a, a of an inflaton field can give rise to some non trivial uh, uh, uh Interestingly, or maybe uh, I don't know how you say this, but the PP require the uh, uh, this theory, some some model of your your, your inflation model to be successfully uh, explain the current observable data, then your interaction strengths must be much much smaller than unity. For example, if you consider some lambda applied to the first interaction, the lambda cannot be greater than ten to minus fifteen. So so this means that the, essentially you you will not have any effect of lambda. Uh, uh, in self interactions, uh, uh, which may uh, produce some non -gashanti. However, here this is the case of so called canonical uh, scalar field, which is the standard sort of have standard Lagrangian with the standard linear kinetic term plus potential. But uh, if you have some non canonical kinetic term, then it has been uh, uh, discussed this uh, extensively, and uh, now we know that it can produce a huge longevity. For example, this is the, the sort of uh, discussed by this uh, Silver Stein and Tom, and uh, already uh, 15, 16, 17 years ago, uh, almost two decades ago. <coughs> this is a case when you consider some this canonical a, a kinetic term, which is given by this kind of square root form. And this is this uh, appears in some kind of uh, a old theory of uh, interactions, and, and this is DDI is a Dirac, Born, and Inter, and those people consider this kind of interaction. In in, in their case, I think it's the uh, electro electro uh, gauge gauge field, but uh, here it is sort of uh, extended to some uh, scalar field case. F is similar to the function of pi. And as you could easily see, if you expand this to a leading order of height of square, you, you cover standard one half height of square uh, kinetic term. But uh, if a phi dot is large so that the square inside square becomes almost zero, then you will have a huge deviation from a, uh, a uh, standard chemical case. And so, since this looks like a, the inverse of this uh, Lorentz factor, so we use this gamma to represent the number square root of this. Then, if you have this kind of kind of term, and if you uh, make a perturbation expansion, then you you need you need to see that the uh, the this uh, a, a, a non-trivial sort of a Lagrangian appears well appears from the second order term. Uh, which will be proportional to gamma q, and then higher order will be gamma fifth to the fifth, and so on, so forth. So, so it means that they it will produce large contributions to the fluctuations, and 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 in fact, so the uh, if you consider some fluctuation scalar field of this uh, field, then they are this they are depending on how. Small this square root inside square root is a, a it will be the fluctuation will be enhanced by the factor of gamma square, so this can lead to a very very large inversion. <coughs> uh, uh, this is a, a sort of a, a general way to analyze this kind of a inversion, which and then they call it a bi spectrum. Uh, by the way, so. At leading order, when we go to a second order, uh, maybe it's, uh, uh, okay. that's, how do I, oh, yeah. oh, no, no. So, so, uh, so, uh, what, what was I doing? <laughs> sorry, sorry, I forgot what the, what I wanted to do. Uh, all right, maybe I should do it later. Okay. Uh, anyway, so so uh, you may have a large a, uh, a non-Gaussian fluctuations in in the uh, perturbation in the scalar field. 
and which eventually gives rise to a scalar field fluctuation is proportional to the curvature correlation. Uh, it gives rise to some large long uh, uh, Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I, was, I was just trying to say that the, why, why we consider sequence function. <laughs> That's right. Oh, yeah, right. Okay. So, uh, uh, wait a minute. Uh, So, so this is because if you consider, I mean, if you consider the uh, three-point function of, uh, let's say, scalar field, if there is no uh, a higher order sort of correction term, then this will be zero for Gaussian case. So this is such for Gaussian case, this is zero. But if there's any non-trivial sort of identified square or something, then one of them will have Gamma square, get the phi square, uh, zero square, let's say. Get the phi square, get the phi zero. And you can replace this with the reading order term. So at reading order, it, you, you will have the four point function, uh, and which is, of course, non vanishing if you take, for example, this uh, weak uh, contraction between these two fluctuations. And then, then the result is the proportional to you. Gamma square. So this is uh, so so this means that this is important to consider the frequent function as a leading order effect of this non Okay, uh, and uh, so <clears throat> so if you write this in in uh, momentum space, and uh, well, you can immediately go to this uh, coverage perturbation. Uh, uh, expression anyway you, you have this uh, a, a, a typical uh, sort of a form of the Gaussian non from this let's say DDI type equation and uh, in that case this uh, this uh, correction the amplitude of this uh, non is called FNL uh, and this FNL as I said is the order gamma square and uh, 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 for, for this uh, DDI type cases, this FNL, of course, depends on the, uh, um, the uh, momentum. Uh, that the, uh, when the momentum, mo all the momentums are equal, usually it, it, it becomes very really large in this particular case. So, so this case is people call it equilateral case because it corresponds to the uh, this. Uh, Triangle formed by uh, the three momentum to form a, a, a equilateral triangle. Uh, <coughs> or this uh, total momentum must must vanish because of the uh, momentum conservation. Anyway, uh, so if you look at the recent result by say Planck, then this equilateral uh, non Gaussian is uh, constrained to be of order maybe uh, less than 100 let's, let's say 50 or so so uh it's a it is a small uh, maybe you shouldn't say small but anyway it, it is constrained fairly constrained and then of, of course it is consistent with zero but if this uh, if this is observed in in say some future uh near future hopefully then and uh, which is a uh, oh, by the way so in the standard a uh, uh, single field slow inflation case essentially this equilateral non gaussian is zero so uh, if you see any non vanishing equilateral non gaussian it means there was some highly non trivial uh, sort of a, a uh, model or theory or uh, lagrangian was playing the role uh, inside the vice uh, another is the, the case of some non trivial vacuum uh, which may not be so easy to realize that uh, anyway the point is that uh if you consider a, a uh, say limit of pure this uh, expansion pure pure uh, a uh, exponential expansion then this space is uh, known to be maximally symmetric meaning that it has a very high symmetry so you know for one symmetry uh, the symmetry is same as the uh, minkowski space uh, but uh, <coughs> solar inflation uh, uh, means that they actually the, the Hubble parameter 
uh, the variation of operator domain is epsilon is, is very small, but even if it is very small, it may be non-vanishing. And if it is non-vanishing, actually it sort of breaks this uh, this the symmetry by small amount, by this by amount which is given by this epsilon. So, so this it means that the uh, maybe a, a, you may have some uh, 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 by the way, so the the Smith, uh, the vacuum state, which uh, uh, respect this uh, the state invariant uh, in the distance space, uh, the state invariance, and uh, which uh, 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 behaves just like a Minkowski vacuum uh, in the short distance limit is called bunch Davis vacuum or BD vacuum in short. Uh, so uh, a, um, if uh, everything is very, very close to uh, a uh, star space and, and in inverse is uh, inflation is almost quasi the shifter, you would expect or the, you probably expect that the approximately your, your initial state is very close to bunch this vacuum, actually, which is called ideal vacuum, which we discussed yesterday. But uh, if if uh, you have some non-trivial sort of a form of the uh, interactions or non-trivial uh, field and so on and so forth, maybe, maybe you may have some uh, non-perturbative uh, effect from this uh, a, 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 a symmetry breaking term. Uh, uh, I, I'm not saying that this is possible, but for example, you may, uh, you, you may consider, I mean, uh, some just just naively, you, you may have something like a one over some a one over each huh? This 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 time of this kind of a sort of a, uh, I mean, this is really really high in but But anyway, if such a term appears, then the uh, uh, initial state may not be very close to bunch state vacuum or the adaptive adiabatic vacuum. So, uh, so in such case, you may have a, a very highly a, a sort of a non Gaussian uh, state. Uh, anyway, uh, so uh, so that's the case. Oh, by the way, yes. Uh, so to uh, represent uh, uh, some typical behavior of this non gaussianity uh, and so that I mean when oh, by the way when you sort of uh, uh, when when you uh, uh, try to observe or detect those uh, non gaussianities then you do need a so called templates uh, and uh, you 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 uh, you give you give the templates and and you you use you try to match your template with the observation data. And if the matching is very high, then you think that the, uh, you have uh, detected something. But if uh, the uh, matching is not so high, then then uh, you cannot say you detected some non gaussianity or anything. And, and, and usually people consider these three typical types. One is called squeeze type. Uh, squeeze type means that the, uh, the non gaussianity, this FNL parameter becomes peaked, then the, the triangle is one of the uh, angles from zero, almost zero. And uh, actually, this uh, we know that this corresponds to so-called local type of gaussianity. So this we will discuss a bit later. Now that is the equilateral type, which we, I have just, just discussed. And the, and yet another one is called orthogonal, orthogonal type, uh, which I, uh, well, uh, you have some, uh, Orthogonal angle, maybe I should have written a figure here. Uh, so, so, so it's something like this. You have some uh, rectangle, what it was, uh, ninety degrees angle. Okay. So, so, uh, so. People think that the, essentially these three will represent the most of the models very well. So that's why they, they use these three, three templates to 
and uh, check if uh, there are some non-bias scientists, for example, in the CMD and ICFP and so on and so forth. Okay. Uh, now, the second one, which is a, the kind of so local non-bias scientist uh, or you know, classical non-bias scientist, it appears because uh, uh, even if uh, 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 total energy moment of the tensor is almost homogeneous, it, it should be the case on a large scale, large uh, a, a scale greater than Hubble scale, otherwise you would not have any inflationary stage. But uh, each component, as I said, uh, of the scalar field can uh, uh, contribute non-trivial to the total energy of the tensor. Hence, uh, any fluctuation in each component uh, may be a highly non-Gaussian or non-linear. Then this implies that any small perturbation is the, uh, the uh, this uh, uh, total energy of tensor may be a, a highly non-Gaussian. So, uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, where did it go? Yeah. <clears throat> So, uh, and, 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 and for example, this is, the, for example, let's say this is the case. If you have some total part of it, total energy density, which is almost homogeneous, but uh, this say small inhomogeneity may be caused by a huge, you know, a uh, so, sort of a, a huge a density perturbation in one of the components of the, uh, some scale field, let's say. In this case, they are, even if they are this, the perturbation is very large, the, from the point of view of each component, total perturbation is very small. Therefore, you can sort of consider the perturbation, in, uh, let's say the metric perturbation or the curvature perturbation can be linearized. But this linear curvature perturbation can have a highly nonlinear contribution from this highly nonlinear fluctuations. So, this might happen. This may happen if uh, you have some multi scalar field uh, model. Uh, but in this case, uh, as uh, we, as you could see from this, this non nonlinearity is only all, always of a, a local type, meaning uh, say uh, so. So, so if you, if you consider some perturbations in, let's say, delta rho at, time, at, at, at some position x, then this will be a, you, ha, you have some, some uh, coefficient of loss at delta rho, let's say, a, a of x, uh, uh, which might, which may a, contain some non highly say some nonlinear let's say nonlinear contribution of the scalar field, but uh, this always is from a single point, let's say at the same point, and the, if if you have the uh, fluctuations nonlinear uh, in some some uh, field phi let's say delta phi, uh, uh, which may be Gaussian. Uh, it might have some longevity, of course, from inside the horizon. But anyway, uh, if you just assume that some scalar field, let's say, have the fluctuation and it may have some contribution, uh, and uh, you, you have some nonlinear order contribution to the energy density locally, then it uh, will uh, lead to some local type or this uh, squeeze type uh, I discussed in the previous. Uh, Slide. So, <clears throat> uh, and and in this case, uh, actually, the constraint is most severe. The uh, this recent uh, Planck data, the uh, final conclusion is that there is no part type of non 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 gaussianity. Uh, assuming the uh, uh, this FNL is constant in uh, not just constant in in P, but uh, Constant uh, in in uh, yes yeah, well yes it is <laughs> the constant uh, independent of p in, independent uh, so it's called the scale independent local non gaussianity of p so 
for for independent so for those are uh, still independent local language entity you have very very strong concerns it's uh, so it should be of order at most like a, a few uh two or three or four or whatever uh it can it's, so um, it, it's a, a so in some sense fortunate for the uh, standard swallow inflation model but unfortunate for uh, any other sort of model which typically uh, can uh, predict a large local language entity. Anyway, so in this case, because everything is determined locally uh, and uh, classically, uh, well, I, I, I didn't have any time to go into detail, but as I mentioned yesterday, the delta n formalism, uh, which just uh, a, uh, deals with classical dynamics. Uh, can uh, 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 deal with such cases very well. And so uh, there are lots of uh, 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 work uh, done on this kind of uh, mongaizanti in the literature. <clears throat> okay. Is that okay? All right. Uh, Oh, yeah. Okay, let me just summarize the uh, this non gaussianities uh, the origins. Uh, as I said, uh, the, typically you can consider the, the origin of non gaussian to be of three types. The one is from sub horizon, uh, quantum uh, or sub horizon case, uh, which is of quantum origin, and second is the superhorizon case, which is of the classical origin or local origin. Uh, those two cases are the non-gaussianity from inflation, because you may have some other things, but uh, that's uh, sort of those are the typical things we, we can consider. And they, they finally, there's another one which is due to some non-linearity of gravity, uh, and uh, this is the uh, this deals, this has to be uh, dealt with the uh, late time classical dynamics. Uh, uh, I'm not sure if uh, uh, any so there, there there are some some controversies discussed, and uh, it's not so clear yet uh, if uh, uh, this has some large effect or small or negligible or not. Uh, apparently, this needs to be studied more. Anyway, and, uh, as an example of this first and second cases, I uh, presented these typical cases. The, uh, for the first case, uh, some uh, non-trivial alternate uh, term, uh, which means that the essential non-trivial as a interaction model. And in this case, equilateral uh, can be generally quite large. Uh, if you consider some uh, non adiabatic or non BD uh, Bunch Davis vacuum, then uh, well, it's sort of a, and you, you sort of a assume something, some, some, uh, some, you know, highly speculative, some uh, a, a phenomena happened before. Inflation, let's say. So, so it depends on what kind of uh, phenomena you think, and depending on what kind of uh, state you assume that the, you may get any type of non uh, That's that's an interesting uh, sort of. These are some typical predictions, and one interesting uh, sort of a thing that this is. I, I don't think I have time to discuss this. We found a really about approximately a decade ago is that uh, maybe depending on this, uh, you know, a type of non gaussianity which might not be clearly uh, uh, represented by all these things. But if you go to a real space, or maybe to, to this, let's say if you consider some uh, CMB sky, then you may see some uh, non Gaussian sort of a distribution of the uh, inhomogeneities in the sky, meaning that the uh, fluctuations, if you uh, adapt statistically, then uh, may 
form some nongashan uh, uh, so, so, uh, the nongashan in the distribution function. So that, that's an interesting possibility, and but uh, I'm not exactly sure. I mean, it, we have sort of a, uh, it suggested that probably it's an interesting to analyze this uh, nongashan bubbles in the sky, but I'm not exactly sure if this has been done or not. Anyway, uh, so the uh, second, uh, as for the second case, uh, I didn't uh, have time to uh, go through all the uh, models. I should, maybe I should have at least presented one model, but uh, I thought probably I don't have much time because I will probably probably spend a lot, lot of time on the, I, I'd like to, let's say, on the primordial uh, black holes. So, <laughs> So I didn't uh, introduce a, a model, but uh, so so this is just so telling you the result that uh, uh, a, a FNL local maybe order one or maybe it, it, it large on on small scales maybe meaning I say yes maybe I should say or maybe maybe a, a scale dependent uh, scale. Dependent. And this scale dependent actually is an important consequence when we discuss, the, let's say, some primary black hole, uh, uh, original prime black holes, and so on. So anyway, so so this FNL local may be non vanishing. And uh, if if this is actually of order one or greater, as uh, I mentioned yesterday, then it means that standard single field solar model is invalidated. And uh, this may happen in, in sort of a Carverton type. Carverton is the uh, two field model, but the one field which plays no role during the inflation but can dominate the universe after inflation and therefore its perturbation gives rise to the curvature perturbation of the universe. Uh, in this case, however, this generally expected this, this tensor to scalar ratio is much much smaller than unity so in this case although it's an interesting model it sort of predict an interesting uh, uh, say prediction it, it makes uh, an, an interesting prediction for the uh, uh, gravitation wave perturbations from inflation Another case is multi-field model. Uh, in this case, you can uh, virtually, uh, oh, sorry, uh, uh, Carbaton is one of the multi-field model, but uh, so if you just consider some general multi-field model, then uh, then of course you may have some fairly large conceptual scale ratio and very large uh, local non gravity and which may even be uh, scale dependent. So, uh, so actually this multi-field model case is in some sense, uh, in a, in a sense, it's most interesting uh, because uh, you know you can actually play with any type of those models and then uh, make some interesting predictions. And uh, those predictions, any of the such predictions are confirmed by future observations, then uh, you get you get it with something. Anyway. <coughs> uh, so this is a, a so far about the Mangal Shanti. Is there any you can know, of course uh, well there is some question on the chat? Yes. Sankit, would you like to ask your question or do you want me to ask? Okay, I'll ask. So if we observe large non gaussianities, multi field models are more favorable. Is that correct? Oh yeah, yeah. If uh, you, uh, if, uh, if, uh, I'd say this, this in the case of low carbon gas, yes, that's right. For the other types uh, of non gas entity, it's, it's nothing to do with smart field, right? So there are two distinct, in some sense, the cases. One, uh, which is called the local type, and this local type non gas entity, uh, or the uh, in terms of this. Uh, uh, is form, it, uh, form of the, uh, the three point function in, in uh, momentum space, it's this uh, squeezed form. 
Uh, this this corresponds to the <coughs> local type non Gaussian. Okay. Uh, and this triangle shape, if uh, your, your non Gaussian shape is peaked around triangle, triangle or maybe even the orthogonal type, in, in, meaning that the, if uh, the non Gaussian shape is not peaked at this uh, squeezed limit, then uh, they, it, they, they should have come from some non trivial quantum dynamics uh, inside the horizon or some uh, non trivial vacuum state. Okay. Is that okay? Okay. Thanks, Mr. Mm -hmm. Any other questions on this? Okay. All right. So uh, perhaps uh, you, you can ask a question about Mangashanti later, but let me go to this final topic uh, prior to black holes. Primary black holes was, uh, well, I, it, it, it suggested this, the, uh, the existence of such a black holes was suggested a long, long time ago, passed by, uh, well, people say several different things, but uh, uh, when it becomes quite uh, popular, then it was a, uh, uh, I think it's Stephen Hawking and uh, Bernard Cart. So those people, uh, in, in, uh, 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 start maybe in the early universe and, and, and maybe if the fluctuations are very large and uh, not only at this cosmological scale but on some uh, smaller scale then we may have some non-trivial uh, non dynamic really non-linear highly non-linear gravitational dynamics which leads to a primary blockers. so in, in the standard sort of picture, primary black holes are uh, black holes formed in the very early universe uh, and uh, especially in the radiation dominated universe. And uh, here, of course, uh, the universe might be not uh, radiation dominant uh, in some e during some epoch in the early universe. But here in this lecture, I uh, essentially assume that the uh, universe, uh, when the TVA primary black holes are formed, uh, in most cases, let's say, uh, I assume it's radiation dominated. Anyway, so uh, and uh, so presumably they originate from a large positive curvature perturbation, pretty strong in case. And and uh, so so this is the picture, right hand side picture. You you draw some uh, fluctuations, you know, uh, just fluctuations in terms of commuting scale. So. So commuting scales that if you fix commuting scale, actually the physical scale will be expanding, uh, but uh, you're, you're sort of uh, removing the, this expansion and, and uh, drawing some figures with respect to the scale which commuting, commute is the expansion of the universe. So initially the uh, coverage, you have some curvature perturbation uh, and uh, the scale, the scale of the curvature perturbation must be much larger than horizon scale. So the red, this the arrow uh, represent uh, the horizon radius. So the scale of the perturbation is much larger than the horizon. As the uh, universe they expand, as we have seen in this uh, picture, uh, yes, yes. Uh, as the universe expands, this a uh, super horizon scale. This is along the commuting given convenient red number or wavelengths will become really close, really close, really close to the horizon scale, meaning that the Hubble compared to, so if you fix commuting scale, Hubble horizon scale uh, increases and, and, and becomes equal to the, the uh, commuting scale of your interest. Uh, so, so this red arrow, Will increase this the as the time is going on, increase and become a uh, of the same order of the scale of this perturbation. And at this point, if this perturbation in the curvature perturbation uh, is of order one, then this a, 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 this sort of a horizon scale uh, region 
may be regarded as a kind of a closed universe is a positive curvature. Then uh, this closing, as we know or know, we learned in probably undergrad uh, courses, uh, the uh, a, a universe is positive, uh, homogeneous universe with positive uh, spatial curvature with a collapse because of this curvature. And, it's, and which is essentially essentially the same as saying that we are this collapsing due to the high, high large density perturbations. But uh, uh, from, from this sort of a picture, you, you, you'd see that the, actually the, considering the, uh, this formation from the point of view of the curvature perturbation is more reasonable. Anyway, uh, as, as this uh, uh, perturbation is of the one, then uh, that part of the universe becomes a primary uh, black hole. And we will form some horizon and in some sense to separate it out from the red remaining universe, which is still expanding. So this actually means that the, uh, the so everything is determined by the uh, given a scale, we determined by a, the amplitude of perturbation at horizon crossing uh, when, when the scale enters horizon. And the mass of black hole will be determined by that horizon mass. Okay, so uh, so if you draw that thing in this uh, space time diagram again, we then this is what you have. Uh, well, again, well, on very high so sort of CMD scale or large scale structure scales, uh, you have very very strong constraint from Planck data. This is the, uh, this picture; it's a bit too small, <laughs> perhaps for you. But anyway, this gives you some a. a, a uh, this 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 is a constraint on the initial the primordial power spectrum of the coverage perturbation, and uh, primordial coverage perturbation amplitude is very very strongly constrained to be about uh, over uh, ten to minus ten. <clears throat> However, uh, on sufficiently small scale, let's say a a, a distance in terms of e-folds is like twenty e-folds from uh, the scale of our interest. 20 e fold corresponds to e to 20, which is like uh, about 10 orders of magnitude difference in length scale. So if you consider, say, a, a, a say 10 or 100 gigaparsec, I don't know what's the uh, value for, it's not inverse, probably 10 gigaparsec. Uh, if you multiply by 10 to minus 10, then you end up with some kiloparsec or parsec scale. So it's it's a really really small scale. So it's it's, it, it's a, in terms of commodity scale. But on those very small scale, we we virtually don't have any constraints. So uh, so you may have some uh, peak in the curvature separation spectrum. And I will uh, show you later. Uh, some of the example, some example which actually can produce such a peak. But anyway, and if this peak is large enough, then of course, if it is of order one, the, the, this power spectrum peaks of order one, <laughs> then your universe, when, when this the peak, peak enters the horizon, then uh, the, uh, all the universe, all the universe, all the universe will become uh, black or dominated, and which then, then already from this point on, the universe would be, since black hole behaves like uh, just a matter, uh, not radiation. So, uh, so you will end up with some black hole dominant universe, which is in contradiction with the uh, current observation data. So, amount of a uh, black hole produced here must be small enough, but large enough to be interesting. So, so in that sense, it's kind of a a, a, uh, a Fine tuning, but anyway, they, you know, the observation, observation data tells everything. So if uh, we find something, then uh, there must have happened some something like this must have happened before we are units. Anyway, so if you have some peak in the coverage of perturbation spectrum, then uh, some uh, a, a, oh, this this is the amplitude, not the, the uh, amplitude of the coverage of the Sorry, the amplitude of the, uh, um, the uh, so this the uh, a, a, a 
Power spectrum uh, represents the mean value, mean value of the uh, amplitude. But uh, if the, oh, sorry, no, no, it's, it's probably okay, sorry. So the, if the mean value is, let's say, of order one or so, then a, a, you have a, a good chance to have, have some, some small part of the universe to be of the, uh, of the amplitude to be of the order one. And if it is order one, then as I have shown you in the previous slide, definitely that part becomes black hole. So, so the condition for producing not too small, but not too large a primary black hole is that the, uh, the amplitude of the path spectra square root of P, so the amplitude. Amplitude square would be the uh, path spectra of the, uh, 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 yeah, so um, the, this this is the power spectrum, which is a P of K, uh, uh, which is essentially something like the some, uh, let's say, in, in the case of the curvature validation, it's curvature for the square uh, at the given scale of K. So and, and here it so so this means that if the amplitude is greater than order one means that this is of order ten to minus two. So anything any any uh, uh, model uh, which uh, we uh, predict with the power spectrum of the curvature perturbation amplitude to be order ten to minus two will uh, produce some. Uh, primary black holes. <clears throat> now, uh, as I said, it's it's not all the uh, 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 perturbation will become primary black holes. But only the uh, these large fluctuations uh, compared to the mean value of the fluctuation can be, become a black hole. So let's, for example, consider some Gaussian probability distribution. And uh, uh, you have some uh, non trivial uh, the, uh, sort of uh, uh, threshold over which the, uh, uh, if the, if that, so, so you have some distribution function and the uh, fluctuation uh, in, is large enough, then it will form a primary black hole. Now, in this, uh, so by the way, so by using this perturbation in the density perturbation, but uh, this is the cause. Maybe, maybe I should also show this. Uh, if you just simply consider the uh, a, uh, a Newtonian dynamics, we know that uh, well, apart from say some or something. Uh, 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 you will you you have the a, a it's related to the Newtonian potential, like this. And you have this uh, uh, second derivative, and and uh, uh, this this is actually very uh, apart from in the linear perturbation theory, cosmological perturbation theory. This is this the the, the Newtonian potential perturbation is essentially the curvature perturbation we are discussing, and this was. Apart from, oh, yeah, maybe I should say, it's there. so this, uh, <clears throat> uh, then, then uh, uh, what I'm doing, so, oh, yes, so this, this, this will be the coverage of elevation in the real sort of three dimensional coverage of um, Anyway, so. So actually, the um, maybe, maybe this I don't need this. So yeah. yeah. So so as you see, the uh, density perturbation is directly related to the curvature perturbation of the universe. <coughs> so, so you can actually uh, uh, in at least in linear theory. So in linear theory, you can you can discuss the. Uh, uh, probability of uh, forming a black hole in terms of the uh, density parameters. 
then uh, it is known, I mean, from the very old work by uh, Bernard Carr, uh, it's 75, it's like uh, almost half a century ago. Uh, this uh, theta, which is a, a fraction of the uh, energy density, which turns into black hole uh, at the time of formation, can be given uh, by uh, this exponential. This is really uh, the error function. Uh, error function is the integral of this uh, Gaussian distribution. But if the, uh, you are considering the high tail of this distribution, then it, you can approximate this by this uh, exponential function. And uh, as, you, as you see the, here, this, this is the uh, power spectrum. This is an M corresponds to you, you, if you fix the scale K, then, then uh, we have a, a, and the, at the horizon crossing, this, this gives this relation. So given the scale K, you fix the scale at which the, uh, the scale comes inside the horizon, then you can determine the mass inside this Hubble radius, Hubble radius is Q. And, 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 and so, so this K is directly related to this, this M. And so, uh, so this is essentially P of K, but uh, given in terms of the mass scale, because we, are, we want to consider the uh, mass, uh, by the way, so this will be the primary block of mass. Okay, so, so this is how, how uh, you get. Now, now you see, since this is a word of what well, in the old, this uh, from all the work by Carr and even from some recent sort of uh, uh, fairly recent uh, discussions, a, a, a people arrived at the conclusion that we get to see this critical value should be of a, the value of like 0.4 or so. Anyway, it's all the one. Uh, while uh, this uh, a, a, a denominator, which is a power spectrum, is considered to be much smaller than one. So, which means that uh, you have this highly, highly suppressed uh, uh, exponential, uh, which means that the data is usually very, very exponentially small. But that's uh, okay, or oh, that's actually what you need as. Uh, <clears throat> Oops. As we, we are forming a primary black hole very early in the universe. Uh, so if uh, if the universe you you produce too many black holes here, then universe would become matter dominated soon. And so so uh, so this would uh, contradict this the current universe. So you want the primary black hole to uh, be maybe the, the all only to become a, a important at say uh, equal what we know the matter radiation equal time, which is in terms of redshift, it's about uh, uh, one ten thousand. Uh, I don't know ten thousand. Uh, so uh, uh, okay. <laughs> a, so if the redshift uh, it's just just a itself. Uh, okay, okay. So this when when this is approximately ten minus four. Yes. So so you you the, the amount of lime that call you produce must be small enough such that it will not dominate the uh, our universe by the time uh, our universe is dominated by say cold dark matter. Of course, it includes the case when all the cold dark matter is primary black hole. In that case, this is the epoch when the primary black hole starts to dominate our universe. Anyway, so so you cannot produce too much black hole in the real reality universe. Uh, now, uh, the theory, uh, and it, so, so of course, the, this criterion for the primary black hole formation has been discussed extensively in the various literature and various many different results. And, yes. Uh, yes? Uh, sorry, we're, we're on the uh, PVH formation conventional scenario uh, plot slide. I just want to confirm that. Sorry? So the slide you're on, which slide are you currently on? 
Oh, so this is the, uh, 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 oh, again, something's wrong. This is got the Gaussian distribution, but the, you are not seeing it. Okay. We're we're in the we're on the PBH formation conventional scenario slide oh, with okay, the perfect. Okay. Let, let me try again. For some reason, something. Yeah, sometimes it stops. Yeah, so... let, me, let me do it again. Okay. Okay. Now, do you see it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. Great. Thanks. Great. So sorry. Yeah. So uh, so I'm not exactly sure from where I should start again. But anyway, the the important point is that they are so so this value of eta. Is a, a oops, again something wrong? Uh, beta is a usually expected to be very very small because this is the amplitude power spectrum, which is small, or at least a a say ten to minus two or something. And while this is order one, as you can see, this is order one. So. Uh, this is assumed to be very, very small. And that's what you need. You need a very small but finite beta so that they can affect some interesting and can make some interesting phenomenology in the current universe. Okay, and, and the, by the way, so about this um, amplitude, uh, so recent sort of studies uh, using peak theory means that, it, as, as I said, uh, actually, the, the, uh, what you need is the, uh, the regions where you have the large curvature perturbation, it means large real curvature. So as so some positive three-dimensional curvature. So, so this means in terms of this the, the, the curvature perturbation, which is essentially a, uh, a uh, potential for this, you all not only need this to be, let's say, order one. But you also need the uh, this second derivative to be something large uh, compared to some 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 quantity, and which means that you do have a peak peak in the uh, in, uh, spatial distribution. So 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 this this has been this peak theory has been used extensively in this large scale structure formation or clustering and all these discussions. Uh, but uh, of course, it, it, it cannot be uh, sort of powerly used in this uh, PBH formation case. But but you may uh, apply many techniques uh, developed there to, uh, to this case. And the uh, uh, result indicate if you have a fairly sharp peak in the past, but peak in, now the peak in the past spectrum means that it's the K, and if you write P uh, spectrum, or maybe sigma M. In this case, it's this is M. You have some peak. Yes. If uh, you have some peak spectrum, and uh, uh, with the amplitude, this becomes let's say ten to minus two or so. So in, in, in such a case, corresponding critical value, which you, you have used in the sort of old style application. And oh, by the way, this this. This approximation is uh, called pledge, pledge is according to the uh, this traditional usage of this kind of uh, discussion for uh, say the halo formation and so on. I, I don't think I can properly spell shifter, <laughs> pledge shifter formalism. And so uh, uh, in this case, you, you have this value that the sense of the peak theory indicate in this peak spectrum case, a slightly smaller value, which means that you have more that called forming problems. Uh, anyway, this we, uh, we, we still don't have any a, a clear a, uh, uh, understanding of this criterion yet. So uh, there are uh, lots of things to do, but, uh, but it's for sure that they, depending on the, the type of models you can study, you could produce large amount of type of block points, and which may be observed today. Okay, uh, I'm not sure what, what's the next. Uh, maybe, the, uh, okay, so, uh, so I, I should probably stop uh, by explaining. Do you see this uh, PBH constraint figure? Yeah. Yep. 
Yeah, it's fine. Okay, so let me finish before the uh, the break. So, uh, so right now, uh, so of course, the, there are lots of sort of observations which uh, tells us uh, there aren't so many kind of black holes in the universe, uh, uh, and uh, well, I actually, you could probably imagine that because uh, nobody has seen such black holes yet. Yet, still. Uh, there are some interesting possibilities, and, and the, 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 the constraints drawn here as some of the, well, not all the constraints are not drawn here because uh, I'm just drawing some very robust uh, constraints. One coming, one of few. This Subaru is a C and Kepler and Eros Macho. These observations are by gravitational lensing, and if uh, you have the uh, black holes, you know, scattered around in the uh, universe, then the you will see a lot of so-called micro lensing events, and uh, because we don't see them so often, uh, it can constrain the uh, the amount of kind of black hole. And so, so you have you and this uh, that kind of axis is the uh, ratio of the amount of kind of black hole within a cold dark matter. So if f is one, it means that the all the uh, cold dark matter is a uh, constant. To, to consist of primal black holes, while if f is very very small, then uh, only a small fraction of the uh, dark matter is is uh, primal black holes. Now, uh, uh, interestingly, there is a huge window in a very very small scale. This is like uh, a, a protoplanet or planetesimal uh, sort of a scale. Uh, of say 10 to 20, you see 20, 20 grams or so. Uh, this is because uh, uh, the gravitational lensing, of course, uses the uh, optical uh, wavelengths uh, light. And uh, if the scale of the, uh, the, the black hole becomes smaller than this of optical wavelengths, then you cannot see uh, those, uh, 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 you don't see any lensing or anything. Uh, so, so because of this, you have a window. If you go to a small and small scale, then assuming the standard sort of a discussion on the Hawking radiation, the population of black hole due to the quantum effect is correct, then you cannot go uh, too small a black hole case because if a uh, uh, number of black holes are too many, then they will be and around these regions, then those black holes of all order of 10 to 15 and 16 grams, they would have evaporated uh, recently, uh, and uh, which it could be a, a source of a huge uh, background uh, gamma ray. And, and the reason that because that we don't see such gamma rays, it can concern a lot. So this this comes from the uh, standard sort of a Hawking radiation mechanism, and the other side is the classical uh, gravitational lensing effect. On a very large scale, you have the cosmic microwave background constraint, because if you have a large mass black holes, then they, those large mass black holes, if there are too many, can distort the uh, CMD power spectrum. Uh, this is the, uh, the uh, so-called new distortion spectrum in, in the frequency, not in the angular spectrum. But the, so of course you might have some effect on angular spectrum, but uh, since mainly this is for the uh, part uh, 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 so the energy spectrum of CMB, and and so you have some concern. And interestingly, as you all know, that uh, the recently the uh, this LIGO Virgo uh, collaboration they found in dozens or maybe even like about like fifty or almost hundred a. Uh, Mergers of uh, black holes uh, event uh, from uh, uh, the gravitational waves, and and if they are, they may be some of them at least may be primordial, and in that case, the, you accept that the fraction of those kind of black holes is like a one percent or 0.1 percent, and 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 the, the, uh, this is an, another very very interesting region, uh, which is studied extensively in these days. Anyway, they, uh, we do have this uh, big window, and uh, if uh, so, for those small mass black hole case, actually they can be the cold dark matter of the universe, and which is a very very interesting uh, scenario. And uh, everybody, not maybe not everybody, but many people are interested in how to 
say test this scenario. Okay, uh, let's stop here and uh, maybe you have some questions. There's a question in the chat. Thanks, Ms. Uh, yeah. So I'll ask it. So is there a possibility of all dark matter being in the form of PBHs, uh, which would also not affect the standard post-inflationary state of the universe? Right. So this is exactly the, uh, the case. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So so if the primal black hole is in mass is this range, and uh, if the amplitude amount is large enough, then actually you don't need any sort of particle called dark matter. The uh, universe may be filled with small uh, uh, primal okay yeah yeah so so it looks like you need uh a very particular power spectrum to get a signal in the allowed region now is it so what constraints does that pose on the on the actual power spectrum well, uh, that's that's uh, is something. Yeah, well, uh, uh, you can sort of uh, play with. And the uh, simplest case that the, if you don't sort of if you just uh, explain one of them, then you know it's easier. You just have some spectra like this or spectra like this. Mm. Uh, I mean, but if you want to explain both, then it's not so trivial. Huh? <laughs> so, yeah. so and of course, uh, there are people who try to. Uh, a, 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 uh, I explain both by single scenario, and I will uh, a, give you one of such uh, scenarios in the uh, second part of this today's lecture. Okay. Yes. So it's, okay. it's kind of a <laughs> greedy scenario. Uh, Gets tricky. Yeah. Explain everything. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, any other questions? Uh, so if uh, uh, all the, all the black holes uh, are so all the if all the dark matter is not in form of the black holes mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so if some fraction is uh, uh, the black holes and, uh, and 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 some other dark matter is in form of wimps and some other axions and all these things so mm -hmm. is it possible that uh, so uh, so uh, uh, and and these black holes are of course not uh, uh, much larger than the fundamental particles right and all yeah. the other axions and all these things are, um, are the fundamental particles. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so is it possible that uh, that uh, that uh, all so the dark matter in different fractions mm -hmm. uh, they have they have different nature? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Uh, that that's that's possible. Of course. I mean, uh, I mean, uh, you, you may be uh, lucky enough to, that uh, the, uh, the amount of uh, cold dark matter happen to be ab about the same as the uh, amount of primal black holes or amount of uh, those uh, some uh, some non-elementary particle objects. But yes, uh, uh, you always have such possibilities. And uh, of course, once you fix a scenario, you can constrain such models. For example, in this LIGO variable type case, mm -hmm. uh, then you, if you assume the most of the uh, dark matter is a uh, WIMPs, then since WIMPs in, interact and can sort of a, a, a fall into black holes and, and, and those large black holes, and you may form some, uh, you know, some uh, accretion disk and so on and so forth, this can change, this can be observed. And uh, therefore, uh, you may have some very strong constraints on the amount of black holes. As soon as you assume the, uh, the black holes are not they are completely uh, they are dark matter, but uh, it's just on the attraction. So, so you know, it, it all depends on um, your scenario. Mm. But the, within this range, this is 10 to minus about 10 to 20 gram black holes. In this case, uh, it's very difficult. Uh, uh, of course, there are. Uh, some discussions, but even if they say uh, part of the uh, dark matter is dark, dark, dark black holes, or maybe almost all the uh, uh, matter is black hole, it's very difficult to uh, distinguish them, uh, differentiate. So, so you do need to think of some other sort of uh, uh, predictions. If you have some theory or model, then you, you if you just simply predict the large number of black holes, then that's, that's it. Then uh, it doesn't tell us anything. 
you have to you, you have at least one more like hopefully two or three different uh, predictions which can be tested okay okay so any other questions I have one quick question. Uh, well, but it's not directly related. But the um, Higgs inflation mm -hmm. does Higgs does Higgs inflation require all of dark matter to be PBHs? Because there, there's no other candidate, as far as I know. Uh, well, uh, he, he, in, in, in Higgs inflation, I'm, I'm not exactly sure what would happen. Uh, at least, uh, a uh, if the Higgs so, so Higgs is inflation means that you, you have some um, inflation is the Higgs, uh, but on, on scales, they say towards the end of inflation, it, uh, it is coupled some uh, some other additional scale field, which are not in the uh, standard model, then uh, you might uh, be able to do something, some, some those, uh, you know, primal black holes. But okay. within, the uh, I say uh, standard model. Maybe it's difficult. I haven't uh, looked at it, but uh, uh, probably it's difficult. Yes. Okay. 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 Uh, so, if there's no more questions, we can. Um, oh, I yeah. do one last one. Uh, yeah. So, uh, so, uh, so in so in order for the uh, uh, the amplitude to uh, to become very large. Uh, the, the the epsilon the first slow roll uh, parameter uh, must also decrease so much right so uh, so uh, so uh, so once the epsilon uh, goes uh, decreases so much uh, then then uh, then uh, uh, how does that uh, uh, the evolution of epsilon work uh, until it uh, goes outside the the horizon i mean uh, once epsilon decreases so much uh, how does